case anybody doesn't know. I was at Royale for five years, and I loved it there. And then I recently went freelance, right? I made that decision to make that leap to go freelance. And you know, it's funny. One of the reasons why I wanted to go freelance was because, you know, there's a certain type of work that I wanted to do and get into that I just wasn't doing um, there. Like particularly like working on films was on, was on my checklist of things that I wanted to do. And um, yeah, this past year I got the opportunity to do that, which was awesome. So um, yeah, last last April, Perception um, reached out to me, um, asking me if I was interested in working on uh, some film titles. They didn't tell me for what because I had to um, sign some contracts first. But I was like, yeah, I'd love to work on a film. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think. I think, I think they thought I was a local artist um, in New York, which is one of the reasons why they reached out. I came, I, I came to them through a recommendation, and uh, but um, I was like, it's it's a film. This is one of the dream jobs that I wanted to work on. So, um, big shout out to my wife for allowing me to. Uh, sorry, it's my big shout out to my wife for allowing me to uh, go out there for, for five weeks to uh, to work on on that 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 film title. Um, she was gracious enough to allow me to do that. Um, <laughs> And uh, so yeah, I, yes. I'm, I mean I'm based out of LA, but uh, I'll, I'll definitely work on locations in different areas and locations for a temporary period of time, um, in places like New York. And so like yeah, Perception reached out, and and, and I got to work on Spider Man, um, Homecoming, which was awesome. Uh, really really fun. Probably one of the more rewarding projects of my career. And uh, I worked with them for five weeks. We put together the end titles. Uh, it finished in May and uh, came out that June. A really tight deadline, but we were able to get a lot of stuff done. Really small team. Um, yeah, I'm surprised it was only five weeks. That seems pretty quick. Well, just five weeks that I was on it. I was on it, and uh, it, it stretched out for two weeks after I left. And I think they had gotten started on it like a week or two before I got there. But still, like it still was a pretty quick time. Quick timeline just for the number of people that we had, you know, it's, it's, it was really like once as soon as I got there, we hit the ground running, we were ready um, straight into production. So, um, yeah, yeah, and I would encourage people to check out your website because you did a really nice kind of project breakdown. I don't know if it's on your portfolio site. It how is. You sh okay, how you show a little bit of the, um, correct me if I'm wrong, you were doing kind of like animated textures and Photoshop, mapping them to stuff in yeah. Cinema 4D, yeah. just a super fun kind of like simple tools, but the final result doesn't look simple. It's got kind of that 2D, 3D look. Right, right, right. Yeah, like I always love showing my process on my websites just because just being an artist, I love seeing other people's process. Um, that's kind of where I picked that up. It's like I love seeing behind the scenes, you know, kind of pulling back the curtains and seeing a little bit of other artists' process. So I love doing that on my end. So yeah, my website show like a lot of my process um, going from like Photoshop, to Cinema 4D and then ultimately back to Photoshop to kind of give it some more of that kind of cell animated, handcrafted charm. Um, that was just one of the, I mean, we took so many different approaches for this. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, almost each shot was unique in it of itself. Like the whole theme of the titles was, you know, high school art class. So like whatever mediums or whatever uh, tools or whatever is at your disposal in high school, we tried to incorporate that into the titles so whether it be, you know, clay, whether it be hand drawn, you know, whether it be marker, pencil, whatever, uh, we tried to incorporate that. Um, and then some shots were just all completely digital. You know, like it was very much a collage of different techniques where we, uh, some were, you know, some were practical, some were um, we shot, we did, and some we did on completely digital on the computer. Um, and that's just credit to just the amazing uh, designers that I've been fortunate enough to uh, to work with, you know, um, on this particular project. It's definitely not my own doing, that's for sure. I helped, it was a small team. I helped out a lot on animation, but that's that's just a testament to like a good group of strong core individuals coming together, putting to, helping to put uh, an amazing sequence together. So yeah, we, we used all kinds of different techniques for that. And I, I tried to show as much of my practice as possible on the website. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it Came out fantastic. fantastic. Uh, I'm hearing a, hearing a little bit of a feedback loop here. Let me see. Sorry about this, guys. Um, okay, so you're in New York. You're working on that uh, film title. Then you're back in, in LA. Are you just kind of doing um, different in-house stuff around LA? 
Well, <laughs> last year, last year was um very eventful for me. So here's a, here's a, here's the thing. Like uh, just to kind of get a, qu- a quick personal backstory, you know, me me and my wife, uh, we knew that we wanted to have kids, and you know, with that comes, you know, you got to be kind of anchored to a particular location. And there are certain things in my career that I, I wanted to achieve. So I knew that like my uh, my my timetable for trying to achieve those particular things was gonna. I had a small window, you know, because obviously going to New York isn't gonna be as feasible when you have a wife and kids. So at the particular time, I did it. So I was like, all right, let me try and you know try and not. Oddly enough, last year I didn't work in LA. Like half the year I wasn't in LA. Um, half the year I was I was somewhere else. So um, um, when I was in New York, I actually got to work at Facebook. Um, and for that particular gig, uh, it was awesome because my wife got to come up with me. So we, uh, we spent two months up there working with that team, a team called The Factory. Um, I worked with them. And um, I also got the opportunity to work at Apple as well last year. So I was trying to get my hands a little bit into uh, um, the tech the tech scene a little bit, uh, Silicon Valley, working at some of those companies up there. Those that was always on my to do list. Which I guess before it was like if it happens, it happens. But last year I was really trying to be more proactive about it, trying to uh, trying to see if I can get my foot in the door at some of these companies, just to kind of also to observe the scene because like you know obviously motion graphics um, is definitely make taking a little bit of a pivot more towards you know incorporating technology a lot into into its work with you know like AR and VR on the horizon and such like that. So um um and just so many different ways to advertise nowadays. You know, the traditional 1920, 1080 format, you know, isn't the uh isn't the standard as much as it as it used to be. So mm-hmm. now there's so many different ways to uh you know to to create content, you know, in different so I, I I've seen that on the horizon. I wanted to kind of definitely get my my feet a little wet in that particular areas and such. So um, last year I got to work on um, work work in that particular area, and then I came back to LA as a, um, and, and worked at local shops as well out here freelancing um, freelancing in uh, different shops. I worked at sure. The when um, you say so, when you say being a little bit more proactive, how did you? Uh, what steps did you take to be more proactive to to try yeah. to get connections at Facebook and Apple. Sure. Well, you uh, just be, first off, just be connected in the industry, right? You know, just like like you you have friends that are are in the industry who have worked at these places. Like, like I've got good friends who have worked at at Facebook and and um, and Apple. So I, I I reached out to those to those guys and like with this industry, the thing is with this industry is is it's hard to find good artists, like mm-hmm. really good, like good. Uh, strong artists that are good at what they do. Um, they're definitely out there, but the good artists are always booked. You know, they're always they're always in demand. So whenever somebody needs somebody, they always try to try to try to recommend. So when I reached out to some of my friends, with them, I was like, "Hey, like you know, I heard that you. And I know you worked at uh, such and such such such." Um, they love giving references because a lot of times, whenever I can't, whenever I can't take on a booking, I they. It's always it saves the producer so much time because they always ask, "Hey, do you have somebody that you can recommend?" And I always pass along my friend. So it's just like this very awesome community of just like kind of like if you're in there and you're good, you're easy. It's easy to put your name out there and recommend you to other shops and other locations. So yeah, I just I I reached out to a couple of friends that worked there. They gave me some um, information and some contacts, and I just kind of reached out to those particular contacts. And uh, yeah, they were they were definitely interested and brought me up, which was. Which is awesome. So yeah, reaching out to your circle of friends, and also too, like even if you don't have a circle of friends, as far as like that are are that well connected into certain areas, even even still, like LinkedIn, finding a producer, or whoever, like that was definitely what I did before I even like when I was interning or whatever. I didn't know anybody um, um, at some of the shops that I wanted to work at, but you know, just kind of reaching out to different people um, that I knew were on the inside. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Did they? Did you get to do some cool stuff at Facebook? Was it? Yeah. So, like, so what I worked on, I'm still waiting for it to roll out. Like those those projects, it's so it's so interesting. Like when you work at a studio, like you'll have like like at conception, I'll have five weeks to work on a job, you know, to get something done. But then when I work at like places like Facebook, Apple, sometimes I work on a job for six months. So um, 
Uh, what I worked on uh, uh, was really fun and really interesting. Not sure if I can talk about it just yet, but um, um, I'm very eager for it to roll out because it's 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 incorporating animation into the app, which they're slowly doing more of more of, which was which was which was fun. So um, um, yeah, I got to work on in content stuff for the actual platform. It wasn't just like my traditional aspect where like you might be advertising something for Facebook that might go on social or might go on the web or TV. This was actually creating animations that I handed off to a coder, which is awesome, who then kind of incorporated that into the platform. Oh, very cool. And probably a great connection too, even as they roll out Oculus and like kind of do a little bit more in VR and stuff. Um, yeah. I'm sure they'll be they'll be calling you back some of those 3D skills, perhaps. I was, I was very I was very surprised. Facebook is definitely trying to push a lot of different avenues, and and, and I'm definitely trying to be on the kind of the, the cutting edge as far as technology. Um, they're definitely doing a lot of research and R&D out there. Which is awesome. Yeah. All right. So you're back in LA. Um, tell me about uh, the birth of your first child. How did everything go? How's everything going? Since how are you balancing yeah. schedule demands? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So, um, um, yeah. So last year, about uh, we got the great news that we were expecting, and uh, um, that that uh definitely anchored my sales as far as uh, as far as definitely my approach towards work, and it started giving me like more of a sense of like okay, what. Where do we want to be? Where as, as as far as in the future, and what do you want to do? It definitely gives you a lot of perspective. But um, yeah, my daughter was born in December um, last year, and uh, she's three. She just turned three months now, and she's a uh, she's an amazing bundle of joy. A uh, little Leah, little Leah is her name, little Leah, and um, and uh, yeah, it's definitely an adjustment. Um, but it's 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 definitely incredibly rewarding. I look forward to coming home to work to seeing her. Um, but as far as like, you know, like I, like one of the things that you always, that you always hear about, you know, it's just like, you know, uh, your time, your time is very much dedicated to your children in a lot of aspects in a lot of ways. So, um, uh, that's something that I knew was approaching. So, um, but also too, at the same time, I'm an artist and I'm not ready to retire just yet. You know, I'm not going to like the one that I'm, I'm very much, I've, I've gotten here. I've gotten here very much by the extra time that I put into my craft and the extra time that I put into uh, my art. So um, knowing that, I knew that for sure, I was gonna need to be more disciplined with my time. Time management is gonna be huge because you know some of the things that were, I guess, least pri lower priority stuff, maybe I, I don't need to pursue as much. So I, it kind of put the priority list in, in perspective for me of things that I wanted to achieve and accomplish, but at the same time, obviously putting family first and um, um, making sure you have uh, quality of time. So yeah, like right now, it's just like, um, um, I was gonna get to this eventually, but we what we decided to do was, um, I'm actually, I actually, I don't wanna say temporarily, but let's, let's say tentatively moved up here to uh, uh, Cupertino to uh to work at apple so I'm, I'm i'm working there uh it's uh it's it's i'm kind of slightly i'm still freelancing but it's not the uh working at different shops all across town um for now just while especially like early a stage of, of, of our daughter being born and i want to be able to spend more time with her um but uh um when she's asleep or whenever she's knocked out i'm definitely trying to like you know, do specific things to kind of make sure I stay uh, sharp and I stay, I stay uh, uh, connected and that I stay on top of things as far as when it comes to my craft and, and what I'm doing. So, um, and also at work too, like my time at work now, the, the extra time that I may have in the evenings, I may not have as much anymore. So whatever, whenever I'm at work, if I ever have a free, a free minute, free extra time, maybe that's when I'm doing my tutorial instead of doing it at night or whatever, this, that, this, that, and the other. So. Um, time management, yeah, it's definitely, definitely help uh, uh, being more strict about that and just making sure it's focusing on the priorities. Yeah. So, okay, so you're actually up by San Francisco yeah. right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, this is all it's recent, very recent, like within the last, the last, uh, well, this is my second week now up here. So um, it's, it's working out great uh, as far as, especially just like, you know, having a family and everything like that. So, um, uh, Do you prefer it up there to Los Angeles, Metro? 
<laughs> is the traffic worse? It's got to be similar. Uh, it's it's similar if you're traveling a long distance. I, I actually mm -hmm. I live close to work, so actually my commute is like uh, I can't even I can't even talk about my commute to my coworkers because <laughs> some of those guys live in the city. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm 15 minutes away from work, and I, I wanted I intentionally did that because I, I I you know obviously I want to have more time much time as I said um, um, with my daughter and my family when I come home. So um, uh, my commute is it, I, I it's better than LA because I, I live further away, but um which one's better man uh i have lived in la for seven years so i'm so familiar with that city and and to some people i'm still located out there like as far as they as far as far as they know so i haven't officially made any announcement yet i guess i'm doing that now but um <laughs> um um but i'm so ingrained in la I, my brother and sister are still there um mm. all my friends are, are, are back there so yeah it's hard to compare i just got here so um, um, I barely have even been to San Fran since I've been here, but um, I'm sure I warm up to it. I'll yeah, up. yeah. Well, that's beautiful, that's super exciting. Beautiful city for sure. So, is um, well, maybe you can't talk about it a ton, but is Apple using you on client-facing stuff, like advertising stuff, or more development behind the scenes type technology? Advertising stuff. Yeah, just keeping it uh, broad. It's Primarily, you know, advertising stuff. Uh, let's let's say in-store content stuff. Um, for example, um, um, you'll see like the video walls whenever you go into a, a Apple store, working on content um, um, to kind of help promote the products and such. Right now, very but, cool. Like, while I'm here, at the same time, while I'm here, I'm definitely, definitely going to be kind of like, uh, you know, getting a peek at some of the the. the, the augmented reality, kind of some of the, the technology that Apple is trying to pursue and stuff like that, trying to get involved um, in that as much as possible as well. While I'm here. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's uh, very exciting. Um, okay, Black Panther, you, I'm pretty sure you could talk about it because you were, yeah. I think I saw online you were giving a presentation, I don't know if it was at Otis or another spot, um, a part of the talk about the, the Black Panther titles that you got to work on. Right. Tell us about uh, getting recruited to work on this project. So, so yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, so Black Panther spawned off of the work that I did for Spider-Man Homecoming. So I, uh, uh, so April last year, I, I flew up to New York to work with those guys at Perception. I don't know if I said to that earlier, but Perception New York, those guys were, uh, they're, they're pretty much Marvel's right hand man when it comes to movie titles. So just to put a nugget in anybody's ear, if you want to work on a movie, the, 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 your chances of getting in the movie are pretty high if you reach out to some of these studios that always work on, on these titles. And like, just go look at uh, Perception Portfolio. They've done so many titles. Um, and, and also, uh, um, graphics and uh, visual effects for, for, for the, the movies during the film as well. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, so like I, I, I just kind of crediting back to just doing a good job, whatever job you do, like they, they saw my work and they saw my skills and I was really able to flex my muscles with Spider-Man Homecoming. So they saw that and um, they really enjoyed, they really enjoyed uh, me enough to uh, ask me if I wanted to work on um, that. Panther. Oh, also too, well, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to take the credit in that regard. I was proactive as well because um, I knew that they worked on Marvel films and Black Panther being a Marvel film. I definitely put a buzz in their ear at the end of the book and be like, "Hey, if this job comes through, you know, let me know. I'd love to, love to work on it." So yeah, definitely um, being proactive in that sense. But um, um, they they came through. They reached out, and uh, so what they. So I haven't, I haven't even talked about this. This is funny. It's the first time I'm talking about this, I guess, on the record. But um, they they reached out to me to uh, – I thought I was going to be working on the entitled sequence. But I got to work on the movie twice. Um, the first time they reached out was for the prologue sequence. So if you've seen the film, hopefully you've seen it by now. But, like, the, the prologue sequence, the intro sequence, pretty much that's all made out of sand. And it's basically giving the whole backstory of Wakanda and Black Panther, how the Black Panther came to be. Um, the five tribes and such. So um, that whole sequence, um, Perception was actually tasked with doing the previous animation. And the, for those who may not know, pretty much it's the animatic. It's pretty much putting the skeleton um, together of 
basically taking what went from storyboards to rough animatic to uh, polished 3D. And we were pretty much in the middle of that process, basically taking the idea and um, demonstrating how it can move its motion, creating the compositions in 3D and the transitions in, in, in particular. So um, I got to work with Perception for five weeks, pretty much putting that previous together. And it was, it was so humbling because um, it was a small team, but even smaller than, than Spider-Man. I was the only 3D animator um, not the only one, sorry. There was, there was, I was the only full-time person 3D animated on this job. We had uh, uh, two other guys, an art director and another animator who's working on it part-time and our creative director. So um, um, they, they, they had me working on, on this prologue sequence and I was like, are you sure? Am I supposed to, I was, I was so humble. like, am I supposed to be here right now working on this? Just by, it was just me and one other guy. We're creating this prologue sequence for Black Panther and I was like, it was incredibly humbling and, and amazing um, and, uh, and honor, true honor to work on that project. And so um, we created the skeleton and then that was then handed off to uh, Storm Effects. I believe they're in Germany. Germany, I might be making that up um, or miss, uh, miss speaking. But, um, um, they're in Europe, they're in Europe somewhere. So that was handed off to them, to their huge VFX production pipeline. The, this animatic that I created, I helped create was being handed off to this huge VFX pipeline with tons of artists who were essentially tasked with uh, uh, fleshing out this uh, this previous animation that we created. So um, I got to work on that for five weeks. Um, um, and here's another story, another story that nobody knows about, that only a few people will know about too, that I, can, I guess I can talk about a little bit. Um, uh, I've only told like my immediate family, but. Uh, my my booking ended up getting cut short for that job because they did like this screening, this pre-screening, and they got feedback, and they're saying, we're not sure if we need the prologue sequence. So they pretty much stopped production on it five weeks into it. Um, so here I am thinking, I get to work on Black Panther, and <laughs> I, get, I go home with like kind of like so sad because I'm like, man, all this work that I did got cut. Mm. Um, I didn't. It, I, we were told that it wasn't going to make it into film. They were no longer uh, pursuing it. And then I kind of heard through the great finds, hey, it looks like Marvel's picking it back up again. They're handing it off to another studio. So, um, and it was so surprising how true they stayed to the animatic. I was shocked. My, my, I'm telling you, my mouth was on the floor. I was like, wow, like the hand sequence where the hands are like grabbing each other. Um, I helped animate that. The sequence there, the spear is kind of going through. The guy's chest, that was a sequence that we, we concepted together at Perception. And it was just an awesome experience overall. So I got to work on it in the summer, and then I got to work on it um, that fall, helping out with the, uh, the end title sequence for, uh, for Black Panther. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, that's super exciting. The film is a ridiculous success. I think it's now one of the highest grossing films ever and still and still chugging along um it's a film being you know described as having historical cultural significance as unique among films we've ever seen i wonder how you felt working on it did it feel different was it like yeah. i mean work, work is work was it the same as Sp spider-man's pretty badass too but was there just something different about working on this it was it was incredibly humbling and an honor to work on especially being especially being an african-american right at being able to work on a film that celebrates, you know, being African American, all black cast, uh, majority, uh, predominantly all black cast, and um, also just how much success it had. I, I, so I knew I was working on something big, but when it, when it, when it came out, just seeing how, how much it, just the culture behind it, people going up dressing. I went and saw it three times, and every time everybody's coming up dressed it dressing up in their like the shiki outfits and like whatever it may be, Black Panther outfits, whatever it may be, and just seeing so how, how far it trends. I mean, this was just happening all across the world. It was just so humbling just to be able to say that I worked on on that. Um, me and my, my good buddy, which you know as well, I saw also a mentor in Sakani, we're just, we're just geeking out over the fact that we were able to work on this particular job. Um, and uh, being able to see our visuals on screen was just so awesome. Yeah, so it, it was, it, it's, it's incredibly, Especially, especially uh, incredibly uh, 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 important for me, I guess, 
uh, to be able to work on a film like that that has such impact. I was just telling, I was, my, my cousin was saying, like, yeah, you're going to be able to tell that to your daughter and, and, and your grandchildren that you're able to work on that particular film. Cause that's, we feel like that's that's how, how big it's going to be. It's going to be one of those films that I talked about for many, many years. It's, you know, like one of the first big, major black superhero movies. And uh, to be able to say hi, even if, it, even if it was a small part, it, it was it was an amazing be able to, to, and not only that, having my name stamped on the credits, which was, that was, that just blew my mind. Cause we weren't, it was so crazy too, man. So many exciting points. Cause we weren't sure we were gonna even get credit. I didn't, I unfortunately didn't get credited for Spider-Man Homecoming. It just said Perception, um, New York, mm. and, uh, uh, which that happens sometimes. Um, but for this particular film, I remember, I, I remember thinking, I'm not gonna get my hopes up. You know, I was like, I'm not, I'm just gonna kind of like, you know, if it happens, cool, if not, but deep down my side, I was like, oh, it would be so cool if it did. And uh, uh, I got tagged by a friend on Facebook. We got to see a meeting of the movie. And uh, she took a photo of the credits. And uh, I saw my name. And I was like, that's how I found out. I was like, oh, wow. Because I heard they submitted it. I heard this. Cause, but they also submitted my name for Spider-Man Homecoming as well. I just didn't make it. But I, So I heard they submitted it. And I was like, OK, maybe there's a chance it could happen. And it did. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, so for me, it was just a. It's just I was a true honor, real true honor to work on that film. Really, yeah. fun, really fortunate to be able to work on that. Yeah, something tells me we're going to see a sequel, maybe a trilogy. So maybe you've got uh, even more of that production in your future. Hey, awesome. just just one second. Let me plug my laptop in. Sorry about this. Oh, no worries. One second. <laughs> we don't want it to die on you. Oh, uh, headphones. Okay, apologies. Sorry about that. <laughs> I wanted to drop out midway. Um, I'm going to try to get you out of here in the next 10. Tell me um, what, what do you have on your horizon that you're excited about? Oh, man. Um, in the immediate future, uh, right now, what I'm working on is putting together a dinner reel together. I have not had a demo reel since 2012, believe it or not. Um, and uh, I've just been recording work. I've edited a demo reel plenty of times, but um, it just never, I just never posted it up online or I just never was like satisfied or like something would happen where like it would get pushed back. Like perfect example, like I was putting my demo reel together when I, when I, uh, when I was freelance, but then I heard I was gonna be working on these movie titles. So I was like, all right, let me wait to post my demo reel a little bit later so that way I can actually put these movie titles in there. And then Black Panther came out and uh, so I kept pushing it back. Now now I, I've set a pretty strict deadline and I'm working on um, putting that out. I, that's just in the uh, in the immediate future. Um, in the near future, which we've also talked about as well, I'm very, very much considering, especially now now being up here, uh, very much starting to wanting to start to get into uh, creating content as far as like teaching and uh, creating content online for people. A lot of people have been reaching out to me, asking for like, you know, asking for insight on like some of the stuff that I'm doing, and like, especially like, you know, Spider-Man: Homecoming and like some of the other work that I've done in the past. Uh, wanted to know some of those specific techniques. Uh, I teach at Otis College Art and Design, and um, now that I'm up here, um, um, obviously I teach um, teaching. I teach back at in LA, but. Um, um, I still go. I'm gonna finish out the semester. I'm, um, I still fly back home Saturdays, um, not home. Fly back to LA on Saturdays to teach at Otis, and uh, but this will be my last semester. So I want to take everything that I've been teaching for the last three years, three four years now at Otis, uh, the Cinema 40 courses, things I've been learning, and wanting to start to put together a course online to 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 to, to share with students, hopefully through MoGraph Mentor as well, which we've talked about. Um, it's just a matter of just really buckling down and getting that, um, putting that together. Yeah, we have, yeah I, didn't, I didn't know you were still teaching at Otis. That's yeah. uh, that's crazy, you gotta fly back every weekend for class. Yeah, this, this, yeah I, I, uh, I, wanted, I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna kind of bail on them midway through the semester. So um, I'm gonna, I'm going back um, just on Saturday, just flying back. It's only an hour flight. Um, so I'll get, get there pretty quick, teach and then come back. Up uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and I wanted to kind of finish out the, the the semester for those students, especially the seniors who are graduating. 
um, this fall so, or this this spring. So um, um, yeah, like that's that's on the horizon as far as things that I'm looking to get into as well, among other things, among other things. Uh, but um, in the near future, those those two those two things in particular, I got on my plate. Yeah, well, I think a course would be uh, particularly useful, right? Something geared towards uh, kind of film titles. I think, you know, it might be worth at some point getting you and Sakani in a room, and maybe you've already done it, like on speaking and at different schools and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah. just to hear about that production specifically, um, is Sakani still in New York or did he yeah. locate? No, he's in New York. He's still in New York. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I would super look forward to that. It sounds like you got a lot on your plate. You got the family side now uh, up in San Francisco and still teaching back in Los Angeles. A true cosmopolitan man and a jet setter. Just working the major city uh, circuit here, sharing the knowledge and making great work. Um, but I uh, super appreciate you taking some time to chat this morning. We know you got to get to work. Um, today, let me see here. I did have Slack open. Maybe so, if anybody had any questions on Slack. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Nope. Uh, some people posting some of the perception stuff. Yeah, sharing some links, Matt. That's so good is just, you know, actually just geeking out on Handel's portfolio. If you want to check out uh, the projects he's worked on, he's really good about putting kind of process stuff in those posts too. Yeah. Um, so you can really learn a lot. Even, you know, oh, I learned... Yeah. I learned a good deal just looking at some of your um, kind of gifts on the process of Spider-Man. Um, so it's just super helpful and, and I'm super grateful you put that stuff out there. Yeah, yeah. I just want to say the blog as well. Like there's, there's, it's funny because there's a lot of different social media platforms, but my blog is my favorite social media platform because it's kind of like my digital sandbox, kind of like, um, um, you know, I think Jordan Scott calls his blog um, "Spare Parts," and that, that's a good description as far as like what it is. So there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make it to my portfolio, stuff that doesn't get used, or things that got axed or killed, or just kind of small little extra, even more so than my website. I've been um, I've been um, posting to my blog as well. I've been updating it since 2011, so um, it's it's my favorite platform because it truly describes me the most as far as uh, as far as it gives a really good window to me as an artist as far as what I, what I do, what I've been up to. Mm. Yeah. Oh, very good. Well, yeah, we'll be sure to link up the blog as well then. That's awesome. Uh, Handel, my friend, it's so good to see you. Congratulations uh, on the kiddo and all the career success. How's your, and How's your kid doing? Oh man, life is good. So we're up to two now. We got our daughter who's two, uh, son who's going on seven months. Nice. Um, so I'll admit, I actually haven't seen Black Panther yet. I haven't been to a movie theater in like a year and a half. Actually. Oh, good. Um, but I really want to see it. And uh, hopefully soon I can like buy it through the Xbox for 20 bucks or something and rent it at the house because it's, yeah. it's a little tough to get out. But No, all good. It's definitely worth, definitely worth seeing, definitely worth watching. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, man, life is good, and I look forward to um, continuing our conversation in the future, and thanks so much, man. Have a great yeah, day at work. Course. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, good stuff. See you, bud. All right, Mike.